good, good morning, everyone. I think you can hear me well. Um, thank you for this kind introduction and uh, welcome to the presentation of EdgeTech Systems, Decentralized Production of Green Hydrogen through PEM Electrolysis. On my first slide, I want to give you an overview of uh, hydrogen production from EdgeTech uh, Systems at a glance. On the upper left corner, you can see our product portfolio. We started with PEM electrolysis stacks in the kilowatt range, starting from one to five kilowatt. Um, actually, now we also have PEM electrolysis systems, starting from 350 kilowatt at maximum power up to 1.4 megawatts. Um, our markets, are research and development, they have a lot of hydrogen uh, demands, as well as the industry. Um, we see a growing market for mobility, more and more fuel cell cars enter the market. Um, Methanization and injection into the natural gas grid is a strong topic for us now. So they are growing markets and we are pretty happy to serve them with our PEM electrolysis systems. Um, we achieve our goals with um, strong research partners. Um, most of the leading institutes uh, here in Germany, named Fraunhofer uh, Institutes, um, ZAE, ULIC, um, DLR, ZAE, Bayern, ZBT, we all work with them together, and uh, this is a strong collaboration to, to be always on top with our PEM electrolysis. Um, on the bottom, you see our timeline. Um, we have, uh, in 2010, GP Joule, a strong company for renewable energies, took over the lead at HTIC Systems. Since then, we had some um, development to do. We had a proof of market phase lasting until 2016. And finally, in 2017, we could uh, present our first products here on the, the Hanover Trade Fair. Later on, we had our first sales um, in 2018. And once of a sudden, we realized, OK, we need more production, more research capacity. So uh, last year, we moved to new offices, one close to Hamburg in Prague and one in Augsburg. Um, in 2019, actually yesterday, we announced our 1.4 megawatt system. Uh, which, of course, is another big step. Um, what is not on the slide now is a very, very interesting and very um, good sign for us, of course, but also for the entire community. We have a new uh, shareholder, um, MAN Energy Solutions, a very strong company for, um, for engines and for gas uh, use, uh, um, took over 40% of uh, EdgeTech systems. Um, and this is really, this gives us a lot of uh, strong background if to increase our production capacity. Okay, this doesn't work. Can yeah, there we are. <laughs> um, this gives uh, you a broader uh, overview about our systems and stacks. On the left-hand side, you see our Series S30 stack, which has a power range of one to five kilowatts. It's a very compact design, really reliable. We tested it for more than 100,000 hours. Um, you have a very high efficiency, and uh, you can buy this actually um, since two years. Um, in the middle is our standard product, ME100-350. Uh, delivers you 100 kilograms of hydrogen each day with a, a peak power of 350 kilowatts. And on the right hand side, it's our new product, the 1.4 megawatt um, electrolyzer, which produces 450 kilograms of hydrogen each day. They all comes in ISO containers, so they can be shipped pretty easily, installed, and then there are already set supply, as our logo says. Okay, um, here you see our stack design, uh, S450, which we use in the megawatt electrolyzers. Um, on the right hand side, you see one big advantage of our stack. This is the capability to use it in series. By that, we can uh, increase the total stack voltage and uh, save some costs for the um, power supply. Another big advantage is that we can cascade our stack technology to any power demand that the customer might have. And this gives us, in the later stage, when we might uh, need to replace a stack, the possibility that we can do it very quickly. We just need to re replace a, a, a small part of the electrolysis system. Um, there are other parts that can still operate. So we have a very high reliability of our PEM electrolysis systems. Okay, I think it needs a new battery. 
Okay, so this gives us our, um, this shows our references. On the upper left corner, you see our um, test branch in Buttenwiesen, 140 kilowatt electrolysis system, which operates since the beginning of um, 2017. A few months later, we had installed a prototype of our ME100-350 in the upper north of Germany in Reusenköge. Um, there are two projects now ongoing. Um, we are ready to deliver uh, one, uh, the ME100-350 to um, the wind park in, in Elhaft, and uh, next year we will deliver a one megawatt uh, electrolyzer to Greenpeace Energy and Energy des Nordens uh, also in, uh, it is, will be placed in Haurup. We have a very nice project ongoing. It's the so-called e-farm project. which will be installed close to Husum, also in the north of Germany, where we will deliver five electrolysis systems. And we have uh, the entire um, system of uh, wind energy, hydrogen production, hydrogen storage, and also hydrogen supply in uh, fuel fueling stations, as well as buses that will be operated there. So the whole value chain of generating uh, renewable energy, storing it, and distributing it to, to the people who live there will be shown in this project with five electrolysis systems. We will have clean energy there, clean storage, and clean transportation. And we uh, will deliver the first pr the electrolyzers this year, so the project is uh, is granted and will will start. It's a really really nice project. You can also in front of our booth there's a, another booth uh, showing this in detail. If you're interested, we would really like to welcome you there. Um, when it comes to sector coupling, it's what I've mentioned in the first slide as well. Um, hydrogen production and storage is not only for the re-electrification and storing and re uh, the renewable energy, we can deliver hydrogen to multiple customers from the industry, from research and development. So this is really actually now when we don't have the fuel cell systems to re electrify them, there's a very high hydrogen demand in, in Germany already. This graph shows you on the left hand side the amount of energy which is wasted every year in Germany. So we have a high capacity of wind energy converters, but sometimes the grid can't take all this energy and the wind energy converters needs to be switched off. Anyway, the wind farmers, for good reasons, has to be paid. But still, three uh, terawatt hours of energy every year is wasted. At the same time, there's a payment of 300 million euros. When you look at this graph here, it shows the hydrogen demand from the industry uh, in Germany. So we have 70 terawatt hours of hydrogen demand. This means the overcapacity of wind energy could increase 20 times and if we would uh, use this, all this energy for um, electrolysis, we would still find a customer to, to use it. So if we produce hydrogen now, there will be a customer. This, all this energy does not have to be wasted. Okay, this graph shows um, how much energy we will need, uh, how much renewable energy we will need until 2050 if we want to reduce the carbon footprint in Germany by 95%. Um, so we need 500 of gigawatts renewable energy, photovoltaics, wind energy, biomass, um, multiple sources. At the same, same time, we have an electrolysis demand of 200 gigawatts, so a really big and strong market which will appear until 2050. So we did some calculations. What does it actually mean for us? How, how can we supply 200 gigawatts of electrolysis? And then we thought, okay, we have our product, but we also have our neat and small S3050 uh, with five kilowatts power. So this, you see this small device here. So we calculated how many do we need to produce? And um, actually we need to produce more than 5,000 of them each single day. And uh, you won't believe, but we are, we are a little bit behind now. And, and then we said, okay, how can we produce it? Is it really capable? Of course it is. If you look at it in another way, until 2050, um, every second inhabitant of Germany needs to own more or less one of those electrolysis stacks. It's really small. It's just the size of a big milk box. And we have time until 2050 that every second inhabitant needs such a stack, and we are done. We could do it way, way uh, before. If you look for the car industry, for example, um, I think in 2011, the car industry in Germany had a record where five million cars were actually uh, produced. 
um, if you give it an average of 40 kilowatt uh, for each car, um, it's a pretty small number. Actually, probably, probably the average is bigger, but this comes to, five, to 200 gigawatts, actually. So the um, car um, power of each year in Germany produced would uh, fill this de demand in one year. So why do we wait until 2050? We have a problem now to solve with climate change, and actually we have the industrial cap capabilities, and uh, we should really take this challenge and solve, solve the problems. Okay, um, of course price is always an issue. What you can see here, that the uh, uh, costs for hydrogen production, um, of course, um, uh, are influenced by the price of the electrolysis system, but uh, the, the strongest influence comes from the electricity price. If you compare here the, the price for a 1,000 euro per kilowatt electrolyzer to one that costs 2,000 uh, euros per kilowatt and you want to achieve a hydrogen price of 8 euros per kilogram at the fueling station, the price for the electricity to have it uh, only changed from like, what is it, 9 cents to 12 cents. So only 3 cents in difference if the electrolyzer uh, costs twice as much. So it's electricity price driven and we actually can uh, produce electricity at a very cheap price nowadays with renewable energy. So it's 3 to 5 cents um, is possible. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I would be happy to receive you on our booth at B52. Thanks you for your attention and I'm welcome to receive questions. Okay, thank you okay. very much. You're welcome. Um, are there any questions from the audience? No? Okay, so I'm wondering, if it was quite a ride for HTAG with JP Jewel taking over and now yes. Aman. What is your prediction for the future? What do you think, where will this head to or what will be the difference now you have MIN on board? Um, yeah, with MIN we have a strong partner which actually can, can teach us how to come from manufacturing stacks to actually fabricate stacks. So mass production uh, is, is a big challenge for us. If the, this markets come, um, we can't say, okay, yeah, we, want, we have the technology, but we can't produce it. So this is a big danger, and we can solve this with the uh, mass production capabilities of MAN. Okay. So this gives us uh, um, a very strong background in that. And uh, of course, we have um, safety for the next years. So we have a strong partner. They also have some customers that need some methane me engines. And of course, there will be some um, customers coming from that side. So it's a really win-win situation for us. So very promising. If you want to discuss the topic further, please go to their booth at um, B52, right in this direction. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks a lot.